I, I would really use it. Oh, we did it. Okay. Yay! All right, the meeting is back in order. And for the record, we now have coffee tomorrow. Uh, we are now on B.2.9 Universal Suffrage. It is on page 25, if I can read across, of your agendas. It has a debate time of six minutes. Um, six. Six. Uh, who made this motion? Mr. Oakes, as the maker of the motion, would you like to speak in favor? Uh, Ronald Oakes. Uh, when I was looking through the Constitution uh, in my attempt to make uh, what turned out to be the next motion that Dave McCarty and some other people made, I noticed the metaphorical barn door was open and fortunately the horse had let yet to leave and that the Constitution did not prevent a future Worldcon committee from violating sacred tradition and allowing a, the creation of a membership class that allowed people to attend the entire Worldcon but not vote for the Hugo Awards, site selection and participate in the business meeting. And this proposal, I believe, if I did my work correctly, is an attempt to prevent that from happening. And that is all I'm attempting to do, is close the barn door while the horse is still in it. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the motion? S Mr. Walling. I have posted in a financial analysis of the various scenarios possible for breakdown of those memberships, and I believe the economics of the matter will make the World Count Committees not create such a membership. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Ms. Olson, please come to the microphone. I'm, con I'm concerned about the word sell because I know this particular convention gave away over 300 free memberships. I don't know how many of them included voting memberships. Uh, this is a concern of mine. Um, so I don't know if we should change sell to offer or, um, or how that could be handled in terms of people giving away free memberships, which include voting rights. So I throw that to the uh, people up here. Are, are you making a motion to amend? I don't think we have to rule on the particular wording, but if you're making a motion, we can vote on that. I don't know if we could make a motion to offer, to change sell to offer. You can definitely that make that motion. Thank you. We I'd like to change uh, the word sell to provide. Is there a second? second. Yeah. Darcy Connedy. I believe the commentary explicitly states that, that it, they don't want to limit the avail availability of uh, the ability of the CONCOM to offer free memberships which do not include voting rights. Free memberships should not include voting rights, in my opinion. And so the commentary <laughs> does clarify that. And I, so that, I think it's, that, that would, sorry, yes. So I'm, I'm, but I'm asking if, if someone who made the maker of the motion could clarify that that is in fact. This what, discussion, like asking, it does not go in the Constitution, so. You no, know, she was asking, she was, she was saying she the, wanted to change it to offer, but it sounded to me like what she was I mean, actually asking was whether I, a free I, membership yeah. would include voting rights. The, you know? the intention of the motion was to cover the regular purchased memberships, um, obviously memberships that allow full access to the convention, such as for our support people like our partner ASL and our tech support people, that they would normally not get voting memberships. Obviously free memberships, such as our guest of honor memberships, generally do come with voting memberships. I don't want to touch those. It would be the people in this room. We do not want people who would normally be in this room suddenly finding themselves without voting rights because they failed, checked the wrong box is 
what we're trying to prevent. Mr. Blog, for what purpose does the member rise? Did the speaker just now uh, the speaker yield for a question? The speaker was not, did not have the floor. He was answering a question. Do we need to debate Ms. Olson's motion any further? Mr. Yellow, for what purpose does the member rise? That wasn't, uh, no, that's correct. The speaker previously was a speech against, I need a speech in favor of Ms. Olson's motion to change cell to provide. Mr. Cronengold? No, no, that wasn't. Is there any objection to calling the question on Ms. Olson's motion? Yes. Uh, all right. Who still wishes to speak? Okay. Every, there are multiple members still wishing to speak. All those in favor of calling Closing debate and calling the question on Ms. Olson's motion, or motion to amend. Please raise your hands. All right, hands down. All those opposed? That's two I'm going to say the no's have it because it's yep. two thirds. All right, so I need a, a speech in favor of the motion. Ms. Kovar? We're not selling, sorry, Elspeth Kovar. We're not selling. What we're doing is providing. You know, offering, you know, we offer memberships to our guests of honor. This would mean we're not giving our guests of honor, you know, free voting rights. You know, provide is a simple one word change and it clarifies what's going on. Spe Mr. Ms. Jones. Lenore Jones. Um, I just want to point out that the current uh, uh, motion does not, in fact, say anything about free memberships, uh, whether they should include or not. We have many free memberships for people such as our card operator, our ASL interpreters, press, etc that do not normally come with voting memberships. Uh, the amendment, as I see it, would force us to offer voting memberships to all of those people. Uh, I don't happen to think that's a good idea. Is there yes. a speech in favor? No. <laughs> Debate need not be factual. I will remind. Is there a speech in favor? Of come to the microphone. Seth Breitbart. The motion, as it is worded, Sal, says that is available to persons of the age of majority. Does that mean to any person of the age of majority, or does that mean to the general public? Huh? Uh, the original motion says, no convention committee shall sell a membership that is available to persons of the age of majority. Does this mean it has to be available to anybody of the age of majority? Yeah. Yeah. Well, in that case, things like press memberships don't matter because they're not available to anybody. They're available to a few people. Yeah, I'm gonna mark that. I don't even know how to mark that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. I think Kov you're over-interpreting that. Mr. Kowalczyk, for what purpose does the member rise? I'm going to say it's available to anyone. <laughs> Mr. Kamal, speak. I don't even. What are we on a speech in favor? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anyone wishing? I'm in favor of the amendment, which is against the original. Favor, yeah. Uh, uh, KJ, um, my thinking is that if a member of the press a um, camera operator, a cart operator, is a fan of science fiction and wants to vote in the Hugos, why not let them? Mr. Kowalczyk, a speech against? Sorry. So, um, R Rick Kowalczyk. Um, so, if a member of the uh, uh, press or camera operator wants to vote in the Hugos, they can buy a membership. They could buy a supporting membership. Uh, to Mr. Breidbart's part, which may or may not be germane to how some people are going to vote, um, 
so a convention could decide to offer AAA memberships without voting rights. And I think the, the original wording of the membership makes it clear that that is forbidden. And I, I, apologies, we have seen um, other committees recently do things which the membership did not expect, uh, which hopefully we've now stopped. I think we need to close this barn door before more horses leave. Do we really need, do we need to debate this further? We're almost out of time. Is there, there's a motion to call the, Second. is there any objection to calling the question? Objection. All those wishing to speak, please either stand or raise your hands. All right, all those in favor of calling the question, please raise your hands. All those opposed, please raise your hands. I'm gonna say the ayes have it, the ayes do have it. The question is called. We are currently on Miss Olson's motion to amend, to change sell to provide. All those in favor of changing that one word, please raise your hands. Hands down. All those opposed, I'm gonna say the noes have it, the motion fails. Do we need to debate the underlying motion any further? Mr. Bloom, for what purpose does the member rise? I would like to speak against. You have time against. Yeah. Yep. How much time is left? 55 seconds. Mr. Chairman, I'm Kent Bloom again. Could, could you? And I, I'm really doing the best I can with the mic. It's really pointed right at me. I don't have a hand free. Thank you. Um, I just want to, to repeat my usual objection to putting these things in the Constitution. They're unenforceable. They're 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 they're, they're useless. And all they do, if they, they're no more effective than a continuing resolution of the business meeting, because we have no way of of, of doing anything to a Worldcon that does something different from this. Uh, I think there are likely to be world cons that want to have membership structures somewhat different than this. Uh, and although I think this is the right thing to do, I don't think we can, we, we can actually require it. Dr. Adams, for what purpose is the mem All right, you. 15 seconds on each side. Call the question. Yeah, there is the motion to call the question is out of order with less than a minute of debate time left. Andrew Adams, this motion would have effect because anybody could come to the business meeting and uh, would therefore have the right to attend the business meeting, even if the convention had sold membership, which they were told did not have that right. Is there any speech against? There's like 10 seconds left. Mike Van Helder. Uh, very briefly, I've been attending Worldcons for 15 years. If in the first five years I had attended Worldcon, there had been a membership on offer which included full attendance but did not include the right to come to a business meeting, which was about as fun as a root canal at 20, I would have happily taken it. Can I get your name? Uh, I, Can I get your name? It's Mike Van Helder. Oh, okay. I'd like to put the question to the floor. Is there any objection to that? I don't need that. I'm out of time. Yes, okay, so we're out of time anyways, yay. Um, all, all those in favor of the underlying motion, which is B.2.9, please raise your hands. All right, hands down, all those opposed. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it. B.2.9 has its first passage. We have one more item of business. It is currently 12.53. I would really like to beg the meeting to just stay what, it, technically it will be one minute over if we just use the debate time to get through this like last beat. We should be so lucky. Mr. Yellow, for what purpose does the member rise? Please come to the microphone. Next page, 26. If you're asking for bathroom, like, no, I'll make it go faster. I am one of the makers of the motion, and I have a division heads meeting that will happen essentially immediately after this meeting. Since the debate time, as we know, will expand, I would like to wait until tomorrow because I'd really like to debate my own motion. I 
I speak against that? I don't think it's really. Ben, Ben, I have a problem because I have to leave tomorrow, no later than 2:45, to make my plane home. There's a, there's a, this microphone. Yes, Mr. Stanley. For what purpose? For what purpose does the member rise? Given that Mr. Gallo seemed to forget that he could do so, I move to adjourn. Second. The motion had already been made, but he didn't make it. He, he made it. Oh, I, it. I just didn't have a microphone that was turned on to I recognize said. him. There is this. Is there any objection to adjourning for the day? Yes. 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 All right. We're going to vote on adjourning. All those in favor of adjourning for the day, please raise your hands. Hands down. All those opposed. I'm going to say the noes have it. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Breitbart, for what purpose does the member rise? Oh, God. Move to amend the motion. Please come to the microphone. Seth Breitbart, I move to amend the motion to say, except that in the case of death of a natural person holding a supporting membership, it may be transferred to or from the estate of the decedent. Letting it die in the estate is not useful. There's a second. Uh, Mr. Yallo, do you want to speak against the amendment? Please come to the microphone. I thought it was going to be quick enough. Point of information, am I correct that once a membership has been transferred to the estate of a person, it is no longer held by a natural person, but is instead held by an estate, which is, by definition, not a natural person? I am, I am, yes. As not a legal scholar, yes. <laughs> okay, we are now in debate on the, that was, an, do you, Mr. Yellow, do you wish to speak in favor of your motion or, okay, then. We can put you on the podium, you know. What this motion does... Pick up the mic. Ben Yallo. What this motion does is it separates membership in the society, of which we are all members of the World Science Fiction Society as a part of this particular body, and the right to attend the annual meeting of the society. What this says is, you join the society because you believe in the principles of the society, you believe in the activities of the society, you want to join the society, and you make that decision irrevocably. However, the decision, which is frequently based on things like, I don't have enough money, or I do have enough money, or things like that, to attend the annual meeting of the society, which is this, should clearly be able to be transferable. But if you're in, you're in. There is also, besides the philosophical question, the administrative question. Speaking as a site past site selection administrator and past Hugo administrator, it is an almost impossible task to verify who has what rights, particularly because they tend to get transferred and we lose track. It makes site selection and Hugo administration far more feasible. Ms. Deneroff, a speech against? I spoke with Bruce Farr about this uh, earlier this weekend, and he says that very few people actually transfer the memberships with voting rights. It is not an administrative nightmare. It would make it harder for people to join the Worldcon, to attend the Worldcon, because these days people speculate, I'll buy a membership now, and if I can't go, I can sell my membership. If we put this restriction in, we will have fewer people buying their memberships because they won't know until the last minute whether or not they can attend. Is there a speech in favor? 
There's a motion to call the question. Is that seconded? Is there any objection to calling the question? All right. Those who wish to speak, please raise your hands. There's a motion on the floor. All right. We're going to vote on calling the question. All those in favor of calling the question, please raise your hands. All right, hands down. All those opposed? I'm going to say the ayes have it. The ayes do have it. The question is called. The question is now on the motion B.2.10, non-transferability of voting rights. All those in favor, please raise your hands. Hands down. All those opposed? The no's appear to have it. The no's do have it. The motion fails. Is, it, is there any objection to adjourning? Oh, we need to know the committee. We are going to adjourn with thanks to the interpreters, the cart operator, and all of the volunteers that have helped make this more accessible, including coffee, which is also helping to make it more accessible.